are listening to Shop Talk with your host, Kevin Tates. Brought to you by Eastwood Tools. Everything you need to do the job right. Hey, gearheads, you're listening to Shop Talk. I'm your host, Kevin Tates, and this is brought to you by the Eastwood Company, makers of fine tools and automotive equipment. Today, we're going to chat with T.C. Panic from Bay One Customs, tucked away in a quiet little corner of Tennessee called Springfield, quietly and efficiently kicking out some of the coolest custom work that you're ever going to lay your eyes on. Now, T.C. was instrumental in helping with the Jaded Project, and arguably without him and without his shop and without his time, energy, and love that he put into the car, it never would have happened. And I'm so proud to call him my friend, and it was very cool to work with him. Today, we're going to talk about what's going on with Bay One. We'll tell you some funny Jaded stories and talk about SEMA and how it kind of opened up his parameters and, and helped him get a better perspective on the industry and opened a lot of doors and the importance of attending the SEMA show if you can possibly find a way to get out to the SEMA show and check it out. It's really important and it's awesome. We're also going to talk about Eastwood and what they've got coming down the pike and how the Eastwood Company's tools have served us. TC's got some great advice for people coming up in the industry that want to create custom vehicles and don't really know how to get there. It's a thought process, it's attention to detail, and it's a sense of integrity that you've got to either already have or build. And, you know, he's a great guy to talk about that because he is all of those things. So listen in on today's Shop Talk episode and learn about the Road to SEMA 2013 for Bay One Customs. You're listening to Shop Talk, brought to you by the Eastwood Company, makers of fine automotive tools and equipment. Well, we've got one of those guys on the line today that arguably you could blindfold him and point him in a direction and he'd, he'd just go for it and land on his feet and come out with a big smile on his face and an unbelievably well-crafted project at the other end. I'm talking about T.C. Panic from Bay One Customs in Springfield, Tennessee. T.C. and I have been friends for a while. We've worked together on a couple of different TV shows. TV, uh, uh, TV is just the least of my involvement with T.C. Panic. Uh, he was instrumental in finishing the Jaded Project for the SEMA show in 2012, and uh, and through all of that, uh, we've just sort of been working together on a couple of other things, but I wanted to talk to him and uh, let you guys know some of the things that he's getting into and some of the way his horizons have been broadened over over the last little while, and uh, kind of, he's got his finger on the pulse of, you know, everything from technology to what's happening and hot rodding, and, and just an interesting cat. So, TC, thank you for spending time for us, and welcome to Shop Talk. Well, thanks for having me on the show. I uh, just want to say it's an honor to be recognized to do what you love to do for a living. Uh, isn't that the truth, man? It's uh, you know the the saying is uh, do something that you love and you'll never work a day in your life, right? Yeah, that's exactly it, and and that's kind of how I, I've been doing it for for the past seventeen, eighteen years. Well, on that note, um, how did you get started in this stuff? Were you always just uh, had your eye on the on the prize and wanted a hot rod shop, or how how did you get going? Well, it's funny when I was when I was about ten years old, um, my mom and dad bought me a go kart, and for some reason, the first thing I wanted to do was completely take it apart. I remember I took it apart in a million pieces, and uh, and then I just started reassembling it, you know, and fixing and tweaking and putting it back together, and. Uh, it just went from there. You know, my first motorcycle I modified, and and I did that all the way up till uh, till school. And in school, uh, my first car was a '68 Camaro 327 four-speed car. I actually got a paddling for doing a burnout in the parking lot. I don't <laughs> I don't know many people's got a paddling for doing a burnout, but I am one of them. And uh, after school in '85, I went to work at a shop in Nashville called uh, Greg's Auto Repair which is a, a rude awakening to go from Greenbrier, Tennessee, to East Nashville. Uh, the learning curve was just huge on uh, people and cars and, and all that. And then that's when I first started selling time. And as a mechanic or as what I do here, that, that's all you're doing is selling your time for a, for a given race. Interesting right. way to put it. Interesting way to put it. But, yeah, go ahead. And uh, after that, I uh, had a 77 Trans Am Bandit Edition. That was a four-speed car that, that I just loved. Worked on it all the time, and while I was working there at Greg's, I got an offer to be a mechanic at UPS. And I went to work for UPS for a little while as a mechanic, and they almost instantly went into the accident bay where we did uh, major UPS accidents. And that went on for a year or two, and then I became a supervisor and actually ran the 
uh, the shop. I had 46 employees, and uh, that's when I realized I, I enjoyed building the, doing the building and repairing more than anything because the supervision part of it just just wasn't for me. But, well, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of background in collision repair as well. So you know, you're not just talking about taking parts off and putting parts on, are you? You've got to do some improvising and tweaking, don't you? Yes, for sure. And especially doing the accident stuff, I really enjoyed it because I'd have a, a, a trailer or a package car, whatever it was, hooked to the one beside me, and then hooked to the building, and stretching and pulling and chopping, and uh, yeah, I really enjoy that that type of work. But uh, as time went on, UPS offered an early buyout, and I, that's when I started realizing supervision wasn't for me. And uh, I took that early retirement and uh, started working on cars out here in my driveway, and that, that's how Bay One came about. When I was at UPS, Bay One was the wash bay, undercoat bay. So anytime anybody got in trouble, that's where you went. You got sent to Bay One. Well, when I was out here... <laughs> Working in my driveway, one of my repairmen came up there and looked up at me working on this vehicle in the driveway, and he goes, boy, TC, Bay One Tail, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's where the name for uh, Bay One come about. And uh, I have to give a shout-out to my wife for letting me uh, leave UPS as a supervisor to work on cars in the driveway, because when I started, I didn't have enough business to pay the bills, so I uh, cleaned carpet. And I cleaned carpet at night and on weekends, and I did hotels, and I did whatever I had to do to, you know, to, to try to work on these cars. But she always supported you, right? Yes, she did. And if she didn't do that, it would, you know, it, it would have went south because uh, it was a, it was a tough blow isn't financially. Isn't it great? Isn't it great to have a life partner that understands that you need to do something that that uh, that inspires you that. Uh, you know th that your instincts are correct and that they trust you. That's that's fantastic. You know I've got the same situation, but it's wonderful that your wife was uh, was supportive for you. Yep, yep. I couldn't I couldn't have done it without her. So uh, well, that's cool. Yeah, you know, that's kind of the story of how Bay One got going there about seventeen, eighteen years ago. And you and I met when you brought this outstanding COE Custom to Power Block. It was a beautiful rig, and if people go to Bay One Customs dot com, your website, there's pictures of that COE on there, aren't aren't there? Yes. Yes, and uh, the, one of the funny things about that truck, I, I learned a hard lesson on that truck. Uh, we we took that truck and we stretched it and modified. We did several, you know, four or five thousand hours worth of work on it, and I was so focused on making it period correct and and detailed that some people thought I just repainted a fire truck, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that that just killed me to be so such a custom. You know, the doors were hand, the rear doors were handmade. I mean, all of it was handmade. Well, you can't really put a bunch of post-it notes on all the custom stuff to bring people's attention to it. And, you know, I mean, that's a testament to your skill, uh, it, that people thought it blended so seamlessly that it was original. Yeah, yeah, and I sure did. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, lesson learned there. Yeah, yeah. But, well, very cool. Since then, it's uh, it's it's been fun knowing you and... Uh, and it's been a, a lot of fun working on Jaded. And, and you're the guy, I repeat this all the time, you're the guy that taught me the saying, uh, it's, it's like eating an elephant, just one bite at a time. And I love that. And uh, you referred to that um, during the Jaded project, during the, uh, the what, two or three months that we were just absolutely, and you more than me uh, because of the other commitments that I have, we were just absolutely... Uh, swamped with the overwhelming task of getting that car ready. So what I wanted to ask you in particular, is there is there a moment, now you don't have to tell me this, but is there a moment to where I had gone home and you were about to turn the lights off and you looked at that silly little Ford Mustang and said, what the heck have I got myself into? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you what that moment was, is when you uh, invited me in to help and I show up at your shop in Pulaski, and we mm -hmm. open the door with 50 days left, and your car is scattered over five bays and a paint base. <laughs> and I just like, oh my goodness! And you're in there trying to paint. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. There's a picture of that somewhere, isn't there? Yes, yes. And look, looks like the car exploded. But in my mind, it was it was it was, it was getting close to being finished. Uh, the chassis was painted, the engine was in. Uh, heck, I had the the body on a rotisserie. We were getting to shoot some uh, Eastwood paint on it, and and uh, well, we're on the home stretch. <laughs> yeah, well, you had your mind around a little more than I did when I saw it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Gotcha. Well, regardless, uh, regardless, it ended, it turned up okay, and and uh, it, it, it's a, it's a fun little car to drive. You still haven't had a chance to have some seat time in it, have you? Not other than the parade, you know, the day of chaos down there in Vegas. That's true. That's true. Uh, I got to tell this story, and we're we're going to get to see him in just a second. But while we're on jaded, uh, TC and I had to, at at SEMA every week at SEMA at Friday at Teardown, which is unbelievable. Um, after teardown, as the vehicles are being funneled out of the big exhibit halls, they call it the SEMA Parade. That's the nickname for it anyways. There's a formal name that I don't remember. But basically, everybody lines up on the streets and watches the parade of these unbelievable custom cars uh, run down the street and go down into Las Vegas traffic to wherever they're going, whether it's uh, uh, parking or the transport trucks or wherever, but you get to see the best of the best, high-end custom cars, trucks, rigs, bikes, whatever was exhibited at SEMA, which is arguably the most coveted display show on the planet, and and it's wild. There's uh, every magazine, every TV show, everybody's running a camera on it. There's still uh, live footage. So, uh, TC and I said, well, no, you know what, the... Uh, uh, what was what was going on with the car? We didn't have cooling fans, or or uh, it, it certainly wasn't tech. We had some running issues. Um, yeah, tell the viewers what what we were up against. Yeah, we, we were low on water, and and then when we pull up to go to our truck, remember the lady said, "Well, you have to go through the parade." Uh huh. And, yeah. and we didn't have any water, so you jumped out and went to the Coke machine <laughs> and bought a bottle of water, and we're funneling bottled water down the radiator, and uh, yeah, and then we then we're out in the middle. All of a sudden, we're out in the middle of the parade in a car we've never even driven. And we had made the conscious effort to not do that. We waited until we thought everybody was gone. So we wouldn't overheat the car. You know, it was it was running enough to get up onto the transport truck. And, and like a lot of display cars, it wasn't completely teched out. And it, was, it, was, it ran and pulled itself down the street. But it was, certainly wasn't finished by any stretch of the imagination. So one of the other things we did was we uh, had to hotwire the cooling fans from the from the fuse panel to the cigarette lighter. So I'm stretched out in the passenger seat with one thumb on the hot lead on the fuse panel and the other one on the cigarette lighter hot lead making the cooling because that silly car wouldn't blow up. So if you see pictures of us on the SEMA parade, there's some on TC's site, there's some on, on uh, a couple of different websites. That's what's going on right there. And those silly grins on our face, we're hoping the car doesn't explode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And after the parade, you know, we got dumped right into four lanes of uh, rush hour traffic. Yeah, we needed to turn left, and the cop told us to turn right, and all of a sudden we're in five lanes of Las Vegas traffic with a Pontiac Grand Am on one side and a, and a Mini Cooper on the other, and, and we're trying to find a way to turn off. The car is unlicensed. It was insured, but it was unlicensed, and there wasn't tags on it, so it was it was kind of crazy. Oh, it was real crazy. And then at the very end of it, I think the car ran out of gas just right after we got done meeting Tim Strange and them, because wasn't it yep. out of gas when you got back? It was out of gas when we got back, and that it was uh, the the transport driver with Pilot Transport, who was a wonderful company and and uh, great to work with. If anybody out there needs any kind of covered transportation, uh, Pilot is the way to go for sure. But the Pilot driver uh, let me know real quick that he didn't appreciate pushing that car. <laughs> but but one of the coolest moments of SEMA that year was you and I rolling into the parking lot. It was at dusk. Uh, there's Chip Foose with his with his beautiful Cadillac. Uh, Tim Strange. Uh, every custom, there was Ferraris, Lamborghinis, everybody's waiting to get loaded up on these transport trucks, and it was like the perfect end to that SEMA show, and we roll up in there with, with jaded rumbling and bumbling, and, and uh, you know, pulled up beside Tim and them, and of course they egged us on for a little bit of a burnout, which you you obliged, you know, because it's not difficult in that car, but uh, it was kind of a cool moment, wasn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, and another funny thing that happened at that show was uh, from having the key on all the time, remember the battery went dead, and we couldn't yep. find a jumper cables or a battery charger in the largest trade show in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and speaking of that, you know, people talk about the hot rod industry and it's a business and it's a $38 billion uh, business and this and that and there's corporates and executives and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, at the bottom of it, it's people. It's guys like you and it's guys like me and it's guys like everybody that's listening to shop talk and it's just a bunch of hot rodders and and we were running around there people saw the panic on our face and kevin bird from two guys garage who i've become friends with just because you know we ended up meeting each other in airports so many times we just started talking but kevin bird came over and took the battery out of his car 
and gave us a battery so we could we could get loaded out. And and the guys, um, Mike Adkins, uh, a bunch of different people were searching the floor of SEMA looking for jumper cables for us. And to me, that just that spoke volumes. And, and that's the underlying current of the whole hot rod industry. So that, to me, was really reaffirming. It made me feel great about uh, about the people that are in it. Yep, yep. I, yeah, I, I enjoy that. Yeah. Now speaking of SEMA, now you hadn't been to SEMA before. A lot of people don't get to go to SEMA because of the fact that it's a close. It's an industry trade show. It's not a car show that you can buy tickets for. It's an industry show. So you've got to be affiliated with somebody in the industry. Now, having said that, it's not all that hard to to um, become a SEMA member if you're a shop. You can uh, you can join up. Go to SEMA.com or SEMA.org, and you can join and become a SEMA member, which I urge you to do because the lobby is very important and the the involvement in the hobby is very important. But also, you can you can kind of tag along with somebody if you uh, if you want to get a badge or or get associated with their company. There's ways to get into it, but it's not open to the public. So so uh, TC and Bay One had never been before, so it was kind of cool to usher you around. But the point that I want to make, or the question that I wanted to ask you specifically, was how did SEMA change the way you look at at what you do and the hot rodding industry? Well, it was definitely an eye opening experience, uh, and it gave me a, a goal to uh, set for my car build, seeing the level of all these other car builds, and then with uh, Heat Shield offering me to bring one of my builds there. Oh, it's just changed the whole bar of my my shop. It seems like, and and, it, and it's one thing to build a car and make it nice, but to know that car is going to be in the largest trade show in the world with all eyes on it, it it really raises the level a little bit and a little more pressure on you. It is a little more pressure, but uh, would you say that it, it it has opened some doors for you? Oh, for sure, because we're definitely going back to Heat Shield, and the project yeah. we're working this time that we're taking. To be in the heat shield booth uh, is one of the most custom builds I've ever done. So normally I would build this car and it would go to the customer or go to a show somewhere. Where this time this one finish is going to be on display at SEMA, which is which is huge for my business. And then meanwhile Eastwood has offered to help me out with the materials, and uh, they they, cool. they've supplied me a custom formulated candy color for the truck and. We're actually streaming this build, and um, I'm p- applying these Eastwood products on it on my blog. You can go to BayOneCustoms.com and watch the blog and watch me use these Eastwood products uh, real time. You know, and the, and the blog that I'm doing is real. So if you see mistakes or or, or mistakes or whatever, we don't edit it. It's, it is <laughs> real time video. Well, it's cool to see the process too, and and uh, I'm a big fan, as you know, of the Eastwood Company and, and the things that they're doing and the the cool stuff that they've got coming down the pike. But what did you think when I told you it was going to be all Eastwood all Eastwood products on Jaded? I, well, I, I haven't really used Eastwood products that much before. Uh, I had seen them and stuff, but I usually just get them locally because it's more convenient. But mm-hmm. being I'm working with uh, Eastwood here lately. Especially with Nick Kapansky, he is he is the most dependable, best person in the world to work with. You know, if you, when you need product, they they come as as he says, and uh, the products are outstanding. I've just uh, just love the products. Well, and that that fast delivery is not just because you're uh, you're working in conjunction with some promotions. You know, I do the same thing. But when I order as a customer, and I've been a customer there since 1994, uh, the the shipping is the same. You're not getting special treatment. That's one of the cool things about Eastwood. And before I forget, I uh, jump ship here. Uh, Heat Shield Products is the company that hosted Jaded at SEMA. And we're, we're so incredibly nice and gracious to both T.C. Pennock and myself. I uh, wanted to say publicly thank you to those guys, and uh, they were fantastic. And obviously it's, it's panned out for you, T.C., with them, with them being um, supportive of, of this uh, beautiful 58 cameo that you're building that I want you to tell the listeners about. But uh, Heat Shield Products is another example of great people in the hot rod industry. So uh, I know you'll join me in... Uh, in saying, you know, thank you to uh, to uh, to uh, Frog. There's a round of applause for those guys. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I don't know. I I feel like we've made some lifelong friends with those guys. Oh uh, yeah, you? and uh, Steve, I talk to Steve all the time now, and 
Mm -hmm. And he's got some really neat products they've got come out with. They've got a new uh, heat shrink sound deadener. Uh, peel and stick. Never, never seen anything like it. Uh, but yeah, huh. they they've been outstanding to me, and and so has Eastwood. Yep. So excellent. Well, listen, uh, we're talking with TC Panic from Bay One Customs here in Tennessee, and um, TC's got a very cool build that's going to the SEMA show. Tell everybody about this '58 Chevrolet pickup that you're okay, working. Okay. Well, on. what we did, we started with a '58 uh, Chevy uh, fleet side. Uh, and the customers want to do something a little bit different. So I started doing a little research in uh, Chevrolet and the archives of Chevrolet and found a, uh, the original builder of the 58 Chevrolet and the Cameo. And he designed a Cameo body style that never got produced because of the expense of it. So I never got to see the actual pictures of his design, but General Motors did send me other pictures that you can see at, at, at uh, bayonecustoms.com on my webpage. And I actually see a link that we did on your show with the truck that talks really in detail about it. Uh, and uh, we tried to re reproduce it. And uh, it's, it's really turned out really, really nice. Well, and when you tackle something, this is one of the cool things about Bay One, is that when, when you tackle something, it's not just, oh, let's, 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 you know, tackle all some metal in here and let's see. You did the geometry and the trigonometry and the math to scale down the headlight bezels and recreate taillight bezels that were not only in the design scope of the vehicle, but also scaled down and proportional. What, what makes you want to do stuff like that? Well, when I build something, I need a number to start with. And if I've, if I've got a number to build to, then, then I'm golden. So what I did was generated the, the numbers for the bed and the taillights and all that stuff from numbers from the cab. So, and then just translate them into the bed and, and then go from there. Uh, that, yeah, you make it sound easy, but it's it's uh, it's beautiful craftsmanship, and what that allows you to do, and you know, forgive me for putting words in your mouth, but what that allows you to do, or it allow, what it allows me to see that you do, is to create perfect proportion you have symmetry in the vehicle your left side matches your right side and everything looks like it came from the factory so that's the beauty of doing that in my eyes what do yeah, you think yeah. and when it when it all fits just right and it all looks at home and you walk up on it and it just looks natural then uh, then then you've done a good job now what would you say to somebody that that is kind of a weekend warrior that wants to do that type of custom work, that wants to do stuff that really stands out at a, at a car show, because uh, people, if you've never seen one of TC's projects up close, uh, you need to try. At least go to his website and see some of the stuff that he's done, because it's, you know, you walk around his vehicles, and, and they're very well done. And it sounds like I'm, I'm blowing smoke or something, but this is, the, this is the truth. And I say the same thing when you're not in the room, Chuck, but... Um, it's if you want to create that kind of work, what would you say to somebody that maybe doesn't have all the experience that that you have or that some of these builders out there listening have? What kind of a mindset do they need to have to to have that goal in mind to really create beautiful custom work? Well, that's a good question because it, it's extremely hard and it's a it's a huge commitment. Sometimes just to get a a millimeter in a door jam, you may have to put that door on and off of there four or five times. And it's the commitment to put that door on there perfectly and then take it back off and then put it back on and, and in every detail. But if you'll stay true to that course, you'll have a real nice quality vehicle when you're done. If you start skipping mm -hmm. those, it, it just goes downhill. And the total build is, is never what it, what it could have been. So. Well, I've always, I've always said that what we do, there's no real technical difference between the Mako paint job and the highest end, high end custom paint job. The difference is not in what you're doing. The chemicals are the same. You've got to scratch the surface to make the paint stick. You've got to apply the filler and block it. The difference is in the follow through and it's in the attention to detail. So, you know, I, not that I want to compare your work or Chip Foose's work to, to Mako, but essentially the technology doesn't change. It's, it's, it's in the hands of of the technician and in the amount of follow through. Would you yes, agree with that? For sure. And the thing about the product is, a lot of people you'll see them mix up their product and they just eyeball it. But those numbers and mix ratios are on that can for a reason. So every product we use and we install, we we do it exactly the way it's supposed to be put on, and and that makes a big difference. 
Well, you know, I, I love sayings, and you know this about me, but but you you have to know the rules in order to know how to break them or to at least bend them. And I subscribe to that. I coach people on on how to do this stuff with paint education, and we try to in little snippets on the TV shows. And and uh, you you got to follow the rules. And the manufacturer's recommendations are very important, just like you say, and uh, with the Eastwood products as well. But once you master how to follow the rules. Then you can do things like, well, tweak your reducers, stagger your reducers on clear coats, like you and I were talking about the other day on these candies, where you're building up six, seven, eight coats of a high solids clear, and you don't get any solvent pop. And this is with the Eastwood yes, clear, right? Yes, and that was a tip you taught me a while back that uh, just was genius. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks when you <laughs> told me, and I just thought that's genius. So, yeah, well, I'll start off my first coat of clear with a medium reducer, maybe even a fast if it's a little cool outside. But I always follow up with that slow on the end, and I've just had no solid mm-hmm. pop since, and it turns out beautifully. Well, and that's one of the things that I picked up from somebody else. From I think it might have been even one of the training schools that I went to. And and uh, so, guys listening, uh, be a sponge, absorb these techniques, talk to people, don't be afraid to talk to people. And and uh, and TC is one of those guys that you can walk up to and start a conversation with, and you feel like you've known him for twenty years. And and uh, you know, uh, I find that's the norm rather than rather than people being stuck up and, and unfriendly and not willing to share their skills. That's that's another great thing about this industry that we're in is that people will share and people want to pass the baton down. So don't be shy, folks. Uh, talk to TC. Talk to uh, uh, talk to anybody that you can talk to. You know, I mean, Chip Foose will stand there and talk to you as long as he can. Uh, these days he's fairly busy, but uh, he's he's what you think he is, and most of these guys yeah. are. But you know. Speaking of Eastwood, uh, you and I have have uh, had the the opportunity to try some of their cool new tools. And one of the things that I like about them is that they're they're actually inventing tools instead of branding tools. And and uh, their, their brake flaring tool uh, saved us a lot of time. But it was a cool moment when we when we uh, brought that thing out of the box and and made it work. Oh yeah, right? and you know I've never even seen one, and I have been flaring brakes for twenty something years the old fashioned way. And uh, I just got done doing the SEMA truck with this new tool, the brake, brake flaring tool, and it's just easy. I, I love it. Best thing that they come out with for flaring brake lines. Yep, and tools like that, uh, I'm a tool junkie, and as you are, you've got some great tools in your shop. And you can see TC's shop on his website, bay1customs.com, and some of the stuff. He's got an old pull max and, and uh, just great stuff to work with. But if you have the right tools, it gives you time back. And you said prior, you said earlier that uh, all we do is really sell our time. Because that's the one thing we can ever get back. We can buy an intake manifold. You can buy primer. You can buy filler. But these are irreplaceable moments in our lives that we give away or sell. And they can never be brought back. So they have to count. They have to matter. And, you know, it sounds like I'm being salesy and pitchy about tools. But the truth is, and I know you'll agree with me, but the truth is if you have the tools that give you back time, it it makes your world easier, and, and it's one of those things that I've learned over the years. And, you know, you can make things happen with that handheld brake flaring tool. And like you said, you've been doing it for 20 years. But this bought you two hours back in your shop this week, and, and uh, it's just a cool thing to uh, to have a company like Eastwood. And of course, there's lots of other companies out there that are making tools. But uh, it's an interesting world that we're working in, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. And if you learn how to make something or do something without the tool, then when you get the tool, boy, it really makes it easy to do. <laughs> you really learn yep. a lot about how, a big, how to do stuff. Because I don't have every tool I need, big, and we have to make stuff work, and, and we have to make tools sometimes. Well, that's what we do when we're building custom vehicles. You know, the parts you got to make the parts, and sometimes you gotta you gotta make the tools to make yeah. the parts. <laughs> yes, yeah, and that's all, and that's a lot of it. Well, listen, man. Tell me something else about Bay One Customs. I know we've got this '58 Chevy uh, that's that's uh, going to debut at SEMA, and I know it's going to be outstanding. I can't wait to see it. But what else is coming down the pike from Bay One Customs? Are you working on anything uh, special? Uh, I've seen I've seen pieces and parts to old Jaguars and and things like that in your shop. Tell uh, tell our listeners uh, what's going on with All right, Bay One. Well, uh, we just finished up a '65 AC Cobra, 500 horse stroker motor. We did a, a black uh, paint job with white stripes on it, and uh, which that's on my website. Um, we're shipping one out today or tomorrow to Montana. We did 
in Montana. Oh. We took a two-wheel drive uh, 54 Ford truck and made it into a four-wheel drive, put a Bluetooth telephone and uh, winch in the front end, and, and you can see that one on my website, which it'll be on the power block the 29th of June. And uh, we've got a 67 Jaguar Roadster we're, we're building right now, which is... It is a it is a roadster convertible. It's the most sought after version of Jaguar that that I'm aware of, and we're doing mm-hmm. a full frame off on it. It'll be a period correct vehicle. We got a '66 Chevelle. We do a full candy paint job on. We're working on. We put a 498 full roller motor, 650 horsepower, uh, motor and fuel injections, nine inch Ford rear end under the back of it. So it ought to really be a beast when we get get that one going. But uh, all these you can check out on my uh, my webpage at bayonecustoms.com. And uh, there's some some older ones that we've done in the past, like we had a '65 El Camino, which we had on the power block years ago. We put a yep, the Hot yep. Wheels car. That's what I called. It. I called it the Hot Wheels car. Big blower motor, zoomies sticking out of the back of a '65 El Camino. That was that was fun yeah, to that look was a at. Yeah, thousand horse uh, blown 540 with a 1471 blower. And believe it or not, <laughs> it was extremely nuts. streetable. When we had that in Good Guys in well, Nashville, was, we drove it from Springfield to Nashville every day, and it, it just did outstanding. People would pull up. We had a couple people pull up beside us and ask us uh, what we were putting that in. Like uh, it, 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 they, would, they would have to scream it because you couldn't hear over the zoomies, and uh, the police didn't pull us over or nothing. It did just fine. Well, and you did that the uh, the rear drive yourself, didn't you? Didn't you come up with that well, on your yeah, own? Well, did, and then we just put it in. And 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 his idea was just take a 9-inch Ford rear end and turn it upside down and, and backwards and put a V-drive out of a drag boat, and then we we made it all work. Man, Ed, that's some fun stuff. Well, go to bay1customs.com and check out the blog, The Road to SEMA 2013. Um, that's one thing that you guys, you're doing email blasts, and you can subscribe and get an email uh, for the the Road to SEMA blog. It's just fun stuff. And, and uh, I got to put, I got to send a shout out to Jeff Roop and to Randy Jones and, and Buford and all the guys that kicked in with Jaded. Uh, you've got some good people that work with you, my friend. And, and uh, I know you consider yourself fortunate and, and blessed to, to have them on yeah, your and team. And also on my webpage is a Jaded page so they can see all about Jaded. And at the bottom of it is a video that we did at SEMA that is just hilarious. <laughs> Well, it's it, it, to say that uh, your uh, your adrenaline is is pumping at SEMA. That's a, that's an understatement. So sometimes sometimes stuff happens that uh, I don't know. It's fun to have a camera on and record it and look back at it. So uh, so yeah, check out check out Bay One Customs website. Well, have you got any any advice to somebody that wants to do what you do? Yeah, I guess uh, uh, the biggest thing would be when you do this, you are just selling time to people and. And every hour just has to be really thought out and planned out, and and a good quality hour of labor for a for a given rate. So, uh, yeah, as long as you stay true to that, and just remember the truth has no agenda. So when you're selling your time and everything you do in that hour is is truthful and honest to that customer, you'll be successful in this business. Well said, my friend. Well, this is this is Shop Talk. I'm Kevin Tate, and we're talking with. T.C. Panic from Bay One Customs, and I want to say out loud, I'm proud to have you as my friend, and I'm proud to know you, and, and it's encouraging to me that that uh, there's guys like you out there that are that are willing to, to go the extra mile and, 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 and do the job right, and, and if you're ever thinking about having somebody help you with a custom build, I strongly recommend you, you look up T.C. and... and uh, you know, give him a shout, and and if nothing else, he can give you great advice. And and you know, we don't charge okay. for advice. Oh, once the once the labor rate starts clicking, well, that's a little bit different. But but um, you know, uh, he's a good guy. And and uh, thank you so much for spending time with us on Shop Talk. And uh, we just really appreciate you. And we're going to be watching. We're going to be watching the road to SEMA. And I'm hoping that we meet up there again. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make sure that we meet up there again. And uh, and we'll do some video and we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about some stuff. And, and we'll show everybody this amazing 58 Chevy Apache that yep, you're and building. And for anybody out there listening, uh, watch the blog, and you'll be able to see a, a car actually built and taken to SEMA, and 
we'll show it at SEMA, and it'll be be pretty interesting. And one final plug: this is the the this is the weekend. If you're listening to this today or on Sunday on the thirtieth, uh, watch the power block. Not just because I'm on the power block, but watch the power block to see this this crazy fifty four Ford pickup truck that looks like a factory four wheel drive. Ford never made one. It's uh it's a fine example of TC's handiwork and the subtle custom quality that goes into every one of his builds. So watch Power Block. Check out Courtney and TC talking about this uh, beautiful truck. So one more time, TC, thanks so much for spending some time with us at Shop Talk. We appreciate you, man. All right. Well, thanks for having me. You're listening to Shop Talk brought to you by the Eastwood Company. Do the job right with Eastwood. TC Panic is a testament to the fact that if you want it bad enough, you can get it. You just got to work for it. And that's true with anything in life. So we thank you for uh, imparting your your wisdom on us, TC. And uh, thanks for participating in Shop Talk. We've got a bunch of cool stuff coming up. Keep on listening to Shop Talk. Check out the Eastwood blog anytime you get a chance. There's lots of cool stuff going on there. Until we talk to you next time, I'm Kevin Tates. On behalf of the Eastwood Company, thanks for listening to Shop Talk. We'll see you down the road. In the meantime... Check out everything at the Eastwood.com website. Eastwood has what it takes to do the job right. And you know me, I like to do the job right. Thanks for listening to Shop Talk. I'm Kevin Tates.